Cheers. Mmm, this is so good. It's mango green sun tea. Mmm. Here we go, the next installment of Human Tuning. Dr. Jean Boulot. Today we're going to talk about my favorite auto, the 32, the lymphatic fork. Yesterday we talked about the 128 and the, and the 64, a great tuning fork for problems with your feet and low back pain. 128 is good for just everything. We get near the end here, closer than I thought actually, because I'm not going to read the appendices, and I was wondering what to read next. I think I'm actually going to go through my mudra cards next. I think that's what I'll do. Let me grab those. I just thought of that. I'll do go through my mudra cards next. And I was thinking, after I finish this book, which is just a couple more days, I'll go through my mudra flashcards with explanations and demos, and then, uh, and then, uh, like, I don't know, like five a day, maybe, right? And then, uh, you guys make comments, and, um, and then I'll give them away at the end. At the end of going through all the cards, I can't remember how many are in here, but that's a lot of cards. Um, yeah, I'll give this away at the end of that. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do next, because I'm almost done with this. And I, I'm not going to read Dr. Sillen's book. It's just too much. It's just too much. So, let's move on to Auto 32. Once again, Auto refers to osteophonic regular tuning forks look like this you strike the tine the movement cycles between them goes out into the ether around you the autos osteophonics have weights at the top so when you activate the fork the weight pushes the frequency and vibration back down you place the handle on you and you get that vibration directly onto into your skin what's unique about this fork though is you can do that you can place the tip on you but because the times are so long we actually use this fork the way we use this fork by moving around in your energy field feeling for changes that you hear changes in the tone or you feel almost like a magnetic pull that's actually how you use this fork so you can do this but the time the tines are just so long not that much ends up coming down you get a lot more effect doing this and I have clients who swear by this for headaches. I have clients who have had or chronic headache people for a variety of reasons. And this and even for their animals, it calms their animals down, it calms them down, and it's a, it's a real miracle worker and a great assessment tool. So let's move on. Auto 32. The Auto 32 tuning fork is a large tuning fork for stimulating and balancing peripheral nerves lymphatic flow, and cranial suture mobility. What's a cranial suture? So your, you know, your head is made of two structures, your cranium, which is the bucket, the bowl that holds your brain, and then your jaw. Your face is part of the cranium. Your jaw is a separate structure. People don't think about it, but you have joints in your cranium. They just don't look like this, or like this, or like this. They actually look like this. They look like the teeth of a zipper. And because they look like sutures, they have become known as sutures. So that's why this is such a great headache fork and lymphatic fork. Uh, use this a lot on my... Uh, 
vets that have TBI and such. The technique for using the Auto 32 is to tap the middle of the tuning fork on the lower part of your hand. This sets the tuning fork in motion and you can see the weights and prongs moving. So normally with an auto, you, you use your hand. It, it's, it's kind of a lot to strike the hockey puck, although you can use your knee. But uh, I have found the best way to activate an auto is to use the broad part of the weight on this part of your hand, which we call a theomar eminence. But only with this fork, not with any other autos, you, you strike the middle on that thenar eminence. And you don't have to do it too hard because you see, you see it moving. You can see it moving. Oh, sorry. You see it moving and you don't hear it so much, but you'll feel it absolutely. Next, bring the Auto 32 to the area body you wanna work with and slowly move it just off the skin. So you can see Dr. John here, he's using it on his knee. Lymphatic session, my favorite. A lymphatic session can be performed anywhere on the body. It uses flowing, watery movement with the Auto 32 in the direction of the lymphatic flow. Begin by holding the Auto 32 just above the skin. Tap the Auto 32 on your hand and move it in the direction of the arrows on the chart. So here, there's just a, a real quick illustration of lymphatic flow. And um, don't worry if, don't worry that you don't have this chart. There's a million charts online, a million things that you can download online or screenshot online about how to move lymph. Million, 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 you don't need this. The key though, is to move it in the direction of lymph. Don't go down. Lymph, you don't want the lymph to pool in your fingers and make your hands swell. You want the lymph to come up, right? Okay. Uh, begin by holding the Auto 32 just above the skin. Tap the Auto 32 in your hand and move it in the direction of the arrows of the chart. Okay. Remember to move it towards the heart the movement should be slow and like a wave with, with surges forward and then retreats. You may do a whole body lymph session or work specific areas. You can sense the lymph is stagnant, cold, moving too slowly. If you do, stop and place the auto 128 directly on that area. I have a little slow down near my elbow. Do not press too deeply, just enough to vibrate the tissue so you're not going in. You're just, you're just transferring the vibration there. Cranial suture session. Cranial bone mobility is very important for general health and well-being. Yeah, think about what's inside those cranial sutures, those cranial joints. Um, your brain your brain, your nervous system, your ability to stand up and walk and function and talk. The cranial sutures, although believed to be fused in traditional medicine, are thought to maintain movement throughout life in cranial osteopathic medicine. Osteopathy, that's me. Not an osteopath, but an osteopathic body worker. That's me. Although the movements are micro movements, they can nevertheless be palpated by trained practitioners. Yes, we can do that. These micro movements have a lot to do with human tuning. The whole cranium can be imagined as a crystal antenna where each bone can freely move into different positions to receive frequencies. I'm gonna read that again. Listen, the whole cranium can be imagined as a crystal antenna where each bone can freely move into different positions to receive frequencies. When cranial bone movement is restricted due to suture holding, many symptoms can result. This is why you have to have cranial work done on a regular basis. The founder of cranial osteopathy, Dr. William Sutherland, 
created a helmet device that allowed him to restrict the mobility of different cranial bones. He reported experienced different symptoms from aches and pains in different joints, headaches, depressions, and digestive problems. I began my study of cranial therapy with Dr. Arthur Lincoln Pauls, head of the British School of Osteopathy in 1974. I was not convinced of the theory behind the work until I had an experience with two of my patients at Bellevue. Before I um, go forward with that, I want to back up where he talked about Dr. Sutherland creating a helmet. So what Dr. Sutherland did, he, uh, he created like a hinged kind of helmet, you know, like old uh, football helmets were these, um, you know, these leather things. And so he would take that kind of a, a device that was kind of soft and he would fit it to his head, but then he would experiment with tightening a side of it. So different parts of his skull would be tight and restricted, which is therefore affecting the neurological processing of the brain tissue underneath it, right? And then he would record if he created a restriction on, you know, the back side of the left part of his skull, it created this effect, whatever it was. He was dizzy, he had a headache, he had digestive problems, he couldn't think straight. And this brings in to account part of why Cranial work is so effective for TBI, trauma, and autism. Yes, children and babies get cranial sacral all the time. Vaccine injury. Any kind of trauma, any kind of recovery, any kind of neurological tissue issue that has affected the top of the shoulders and the neck like whiplash. So let's move on. So he talks about <clears throat> when he was working at Bellevue in the psych hospital. When I worked at Bellevue Psych Hospital, two of my patients, Celia and Tommy, excuse me, devised unique head devices to protect them from receiving different frequencies through their craniums. These were made from hanger wires, pieces of cans, and aluminum foil. Every day, they searched the streets for new pieces of foil and tin to maximize their protection. They made tin foil hats. I spent a good amount of time trying to understand Celia and Tommy, who were in their own way very, very intelligent people. Tommy had a college degree in mathematics and Celia had two years in art school. They were New York street people, acting crazy only when needed to check into the hospital for a good meal. Other than that, they were able to fend for themselves. I asked them why they wore their special head protectors. Tommy told me that one day he began hearing voices and couldn't tune them out. He said they were both sensitive to different frequencies and sometimes they heard voices. He told me his theory about increased radio waves and how our head structure as a receiver works for the waves. His headgear helped him block out and dull out the frequencies. One day I asked Celia if I could remove a piece of foil from her head protector. She agreed, but only for a few moments. I removed a small piece of aluminum foil. Her face changed drastically and she began to talk in fast gibberish. Tommy got upset. He understood what she was saying. I immediately put the foil back in place. Celia's face relaxed. She couldn't remember what had just happened. That evening, I kept thinking about my experiences with Celia. Her speaking reminded me of my boyhood experience listening to the Pentecostal speaking in tongues. I began to wonder if Tommy and Celia were tuned to similar voices. Maybe the voices and frequencies they perceived were real. Maybe their cranial devices really did do something. My thoughts about Tommy and Celia always seemed like forbidden territory and bordering on the insane. At that time, I didn't share with my peers at Bellevue, but kept this to myself for fear of being misunderstood. 
On the other end of the head device spectrum are royal crowns made from fresh, precious stones and metals. Hmm, you never thought about that, did you? Hmm. Some people thought the kings and queens wore these crowns, were gifted with divine blood, and were able to receive divine messages from spirits. The precious metals and stones of their crowns served as amplification devices for receiving divine guidance for their kingdoms. Whereas Tommy and Celia wore their own crowns to block out frequencies, the kings and queens wore their crowns to receive messages. <sighs> In 1975, I met an osteopath from England who explained to me that the bones of the cranium were mobile. He told me that a branch of osteopathic medicine known as cranial osteopathy was devoted only to the cranium. He said the founder, Dr. William Gurner Sullivan, invented a head device to prove the theory of cranial bone mobility. The device was made to fit over the cranium with a system of screws which applied pressure to different cranial bones. Through experimentation on himself, he proved that restriction of cranial bone mobility could produce symptoms like headaches, body aches and pains, changes in thinking and mood, and may be able to affect different diseases. Uh, and here's a picture of, there's more sutures than this, but you can see how it's like uh, teeth, like a zipper, and that's why they're called sutures. While I was being told the story of Dr. Selwyn and his cranial device, I couldn't help but remember my experiences with Tommy and Celia. I later learned that toward the ends of his career, Dr. Selwyn gave lectures on liquid light, waves of energy passing through our cranium. I began to think that Tommy and Celia were intuitively aware of something which Dr. Sutherland had investigated from a grounded scientific perspective. To stimulate suture mobility, tap the auto 32 and slowly run it along the cranial suture. Photos below show the sutures. One suture pass is adequate. You'll feel if there's a sticky, if there's a change in frequency or sound. Peripheral nerve section. The peripheral nervous system consists of sensory receptors that are activated by a change in our internal and external environments. A stimulus to a receptor is converted to an electronic signal and transmitted on the central or autonomic nervous system where it can have an impact on different organs, as well as how we think. The peripheral nerves are not well protected and are exposed to toxins and mechanical injuries. Yes, indeed they are. Tapping the Auto 32 tuning fork and gently moving it over the skin will stimulate the peripheral nervous system and help a wound heal itself. This fork is also mad effective for people who are suffering different kinds of facial palsies, like Bell's palsy or different kind of things like that, not just facial, but anywhere. So uh, that's, where, that's the end of that. Tomorrow we're going to get into the music of the spheres. That might be the end. Oh no, there's no, there's another chapter after that. <coughs> so I'm gonna end this right here today. All right. Yeah, and let me give you a sample of uh, these cards are really nice. I just don't use them anymore. And I'd rather pass them to someone who would like them. Beautiful artwork. And then uh, it's got a list of, uh, well, it's 108 cards. And it goes through one, two, three, four, five. See, so I'll go through all of these. And then at the end of the reading, I'll do like five a day. And then at the end of the reading, after I finish human tuning, I will um, send this to somebody. See, so it tells you about the mudra, shows you how to do the mudra, gives you all kinds of chakra and neurological information about the mudra. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. I've been thinking the last couple of days, what am I going to do next? We're going to do these, and then we'll give them away. Okay, 
so there's a link below if you're interested in a tuning fork any of the tuning forks don't buy a set please don't 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 go out and spend over a hundred dollars on a set don't start there if you're going to get a set just get the c and the g the perfect fifth or start with a 128 or if you have a lot of headaches get a, get a 32. Uh, yeah so let's uh, let's clear with the 4096 the frequency of the frequency of quartz here we go Thanks guys, see you tomorrow.